So take a moment to let the body be still in this kind of meditation seat. We can let the spine be nice and long. Maybe the hands come to rest on the thighs. Or maybe it feels better to flip the palms upside down and let the palms face up towards the sky. Beginning to bring some awareness to your breath. We'll take two open mouth exhales here. Just sign out any stress, any of the worries of the day. So inhale deeply together and exhale, sigh it out. Inhale for one, and exhale, second breath out. Wonderful. And so as we move through class tonight, maybe you have an intention for today's practice. Maybe something specific brought you to your mat, either to move the body, kind of finding stress relief here. Maybe just a little time for self-care. But if not, the theme that I'm thinking about for this week is the idea of sitting with discomfort. So one of my yoga teachers often says that the yoga begins when we want to leave a pose. So meaning that when we're starting to feel uncomfortable and imposed, we're starting to want to fidget, to escape, to fix our hair, wipe our sweaty faces, that's the moment we need to tap into our breath and stay in the posture. And I feel like this really extends to life off the mat as well. I think a lot of us are starting to get a little frustrated with um, the stay at home order and being quarantined, right? And so just that moment where we want to escape and we want to like reject the rules, we have to stick with it. We have to use the tools that we have to take care of ourselves and to know that we're doing the right thing. We're doing the right thing for ourselves and for others. So I invite you to think about that this evening. Um, as we hold some of the postures a little bit longer, maybe just returning to your breath as an anchor. Two more deep inhales here. And beginning to floor the eyes open, you can walk the fingers forward, allow the chest to come closer down to the earth, maybe your forearms, can rest on the earth. If that feels okay, feel free to let the head drop. If you're a little bit more upright, that's also fine. Notice which leg is in front. We'll take two more breaths. With your inhale, begin to come back up. And we'll switch out the legs. So I had my left leg in front. Now I'm gonna have my right leg in front. We're just gently making our way into the hips. Crawl the fingertips forward, coming into your deepest place. Maybe the forearms are on the mat. Oh, my hips are really tight today. We'll be here for three deep breaths. Head can be heavy. And beginning to make your way back up. Beautiful. So as we're going to be getting into the shoulders a little bit later, we're going to just take some shoulder stretches here just to open up that part of the body before we begin moving. So take your right arm, sweep it in front of you, and then bring your left hand to kind of pull that close to your body. You can pull it in as tight as feels good to you. I know if I pull too much, I feel a little bit of a like crackling noise. So two more breaths here, opening up the outside of the shoulder. Release that down. We'll bring the left arm across the body. And then sweep that right arm up. With your next inhale, you release. This time the right hand comes up. And you can begin to let the right hand fall behind you. So this is kind of working into cow facing arms where we'll come later. Left hand comes up, left hand reaches for right elbow and then pull the right elbow as far down as you can. So for some of us, the right elbow is pointing straight up. I know for me, I need to drop my chin for this. If you don't wanna drop your chin and you don't wanna stretch as much, feel free to do that, but we'll do that a little later. So feel free to play with the lifted chin option later on. Easing down is okay here. Just finding that throat block. Two more breaths.
releasing that hand we'll take that on the other side left arm reaches up bend that's the hand comes down the back and then the right hand reaches for the left elbow we'll begin to stretch that down towards the back so you might feel this is a little bit different for some reason this shoulder is more open on my body I think because i am not left-handed so i don't hold as much tension here Begin to release that down to the earth. Awesome. We'll come right just to hands and knees into our tabletop shape. So take your time to get there. You can let your fingers be right under your shoulder points. Here are the toes on top behind you. And we'll find our first round of cat cow. The belly softens, gazing up towards the ceiling. Exhale, tap the tail, press into the palms, gaze back. Inhale, gaze up, exhale, tone the back, gaze to the rear of the mat. Two more like that, chin up, chest up, seat up, and exhale, angry cat. Inhale, and exhale. All right, so we're gonna take some reverse, um, hand to knee crunches. So I'm gonna sweep my left hand out in front of me and then my right leg comes out long. I can flex through my right toes and we're gonna crunch in here. If you want the static pull, feel free to take it, but otherwise crunch in for five. Inhale, four, three, two, and one, everything reaches out long, left hand down to the earth, and then swing that right leg over to the left side. So mine's off the left side of my mat. Keys over the shoulder, feel a little stretch, maybe into the hip and side body. And then drawing the right knee just behind the left knee, we're gonna come into cow facing leg. So I'm sitting back on my sits bones here. I'm all the way over to the left side of my mat and my knees are stacked. If this isn't available, if you have really tight hips, just take easy seat how we began class. Otherwise, you can reach for your strap. We're gonna take that strap into our left hand. And the left hand's gonna come up just like we did before. You can grab for that uh, left elbow, or you can let the strap or the towel hang down your back. Right hand comes behind you, the right thumb faces up, and you can walk your fingers up the strap. So I'm not sure if you can see it because of my angle, but I'm trying to walk my hands as close together as I can, but keeping my chin lifted here. So don't drop the chin, don't drop the head. With our next breath, we'll inhale deeply, and then exhale, fold forward for three breaths, moving into our hips and our shoulders. So a little double whammy here. Stay with it, breathe through the discomfort. And then gently beginning to unwind, you can move the strap over to the right side of the mat and take it on the other side of our body. Return to tabletop, move into one cat cow. And as you're ready, right hand reaches out in front of you, left leg sweeps back, flex through the toes. Five, four, three, two, and one. Everything reaches out long, right hand comes down. And then you can stretch that left leg over to the right side, gaze over the right shoulder. So I can feel the stretch in my left side body. You might feel it in your left calf. One more inhale. And with an exhale, draw that knee underneath the right knee. So this time right knee's on top. You can probably see my legs a little better here. My knees are stacked and I'm pulling my heels as close into my body as I can get them. So the closer they come in, the deeper of a hip stretch it is. Right leg is on top. So we're gonna bring the strap into the right hand. Oh, just kidding. Into our left hand. All right. The opposite hand of whatever you did last time. I think for me it's gonna be right hand. <laughs> A little lost. 
And then walk the fingertips together. So the right thumb faces down, left thumb faces up. So the thumbs face towards one another. As you're ready, inhale. And then exhale, fold over the legs. You might not be able to go very far. That's okay, just go to your level of comfort. So you wanna stay safe here. Begin to come back up. You can release your strap or your towel to your, of your mat. And we'll just return to our down dog one last or our tabletop one last back out before we move to down dog. As you're ready, press into the balls of the feet and lift the hips high. So coming into your first downward facing dog of the day, the head is really heavy, shake it yes. And then shake it no. With our next round of breath, we can inhale, lift the right leg high, fan the right hip open, just opening up that hip a little bit, press down into the right hand a little more, just because that hand kind of wants to lose some of its weight with dumping over to the left side. One more breath, big hip stretch, release that down, opposite side, inhale, left leg reaches, fan this hip open, so just beginning to open our hips early in the practice. Another round of breath here, maybe circling out the ankle. Left foot returns down to the earth, and we'll slowly walk ourselves forward, coming into a ragdoll shape. So grab for opposite elbows here. Let the head be really heavy, so you're framing out your head here. And as you're ready, you can draw the toes together. Inhale, slowly rise up. Hands come to high prayer. We pull that down to heart center, moving into classical sun salutations. Inhale, arms to reach. Exhale, hinge, fold down. Inhale, spine lengthens, gaze forward. Exhale, plant the hands, step the right foot back. Drop the right knee and tuck the toes. Inhale, arms reach. So we'll be here for three breaths in our low lunge or Anjaneyasana. Feel free to look up at the thumbs and let the palms come to touch together. If that doesn't feel good in your neck, you can just gaze gently forward. With your exhale, hands return to the mat. Step back to high plank, fallen kasana. Drop knees, chest, and chin. Bhuvanasana, baby cobra. Plant the hands. Inhale, lift the chest. Squeeze the elbows towards the body. Soft face. Exhale, release. Make your way back to down dog. Maybe moving through tabletop. Full breath here. Next, inhale, right leg high. Bend the right knee, step that through. Quietly coming to low lunge, inhale, arms reach up. So again, our hips square forward. Maybe we can draw the arms back so they're in line with our ears. But just opening up your shoulders as much as feels comfortable to you. So hands out in front feels better. Definitely stay there, we wanna be safe. A little discomfort we can breathe through, but we don't want to endanger any of our body parts. With our exhale, hands plant down, top of the left toes, step forward. Inhale, chest lifts. Exhale, hold. Ground down, reach up. Hands return to prayer. Left side with a variation, inhale. Fold down. Inhale, lift the heart. Exhale, plant the hands. Left foot steps back. Drop the knee on top of the toes. Inhale, bring the arms up by the ears. Bend a little more into that right knee. With our next breath, we're going to take a different twist than we usually do. So drop your right hand down to the earth or to a block, your choice, and then link, bring your left arm high. So it's an open twist. We always go the other direction, but this helps us prep for side angle pose. 
So if this feels really intense, a block could be good here. You can also put the forearm on the thigh. Two more breaths. Release that hand down, frame out the foot. Step back to high plank. Knees, chest, and chin to the earth. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, down dog. Full round of breath here. Inhale, lift the left leg, bend the knee, step the left foot forward. Right knee down, toes on top. Inhale, bring the arms up. Maybe palms come to meet. And again, same thing, that open twist. So left hand comes down, right arm reaches high. Again, a block would feel good. Or the left forearm to give you a little more space if reaching the earth isn't available today. Two more breaths. Bring the hands back down to the earth, and we'll step our back foot forward. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, deep fold, Uttanasana. Ground down, reach up. Hands return to heart center. Sun salutations in A. Inhale, reach. Exhale, fold. Inhale, flat back, gaze forward. Exhale, hands plant. Take the vinyasa of your choice. Knees, chest, chin, or high plank to low plank, thighs hover, or skip the vinyasa. Inhale to your back bend. Exhale, downward facing dog. Since we're playing with discomfort, we're gonna stay in our down dogs a little longer tonight. So we'll be here for five breaths. So five. Four, three, two, and one. Gaze forward, step or hop up top. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, deep as full. Heels press down, hands meet at high prayer, and they return to our chest. Another chest like that, inhale, reach, stay with it, breathe through it. Exhale, fold. Inhale, nice 90 degree angle. And then exhale, the hands splash down, Chaturanga Dandasana, high plank to walk, squeeze in. Inhale, heart lift. Exhale, hips lift, five breaths here. So if this doesn't feel like a resting place for you, find somewhere that feels comfortable that you can be still. Three. Two. And one, knees forward, coming up top. Inhale, lift the heart. Exhale, deeper fold. Root to rise. Hands return to prayer. We'll move right into our sun salutations in B. So on the inhale, find your chair pose. You can either keep the knees pressed together, a little gap in the heels, or maybe you find a wider stance. If it feels okay, maybe you can bring the hands to touch overhead. Try to bring them in line with the ears. Maybe gaze up with the hands. One more breath here. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lift the spine. Exhale, plant the hands. Optional vinyasa. With your next breath, right leg steps forward behind the right wrist, so left heel comes down. We'll stay in our warrior one for 30 breaths, so take your time to get there. You can always wiggle that left foot a little farther forward. Sorry, that's your right foot, my bad. Exhale, 
And with your next exhale, hands bringing out the foot, you come down, optional vinyasa. Inhale, left foot steps forward, warrior one, right heel down, arms reach up. Three breaths. And exhale, hands return to the mat. Last vinyasa here, breathe through it. Again, five breaths in our down dog. So we're building stamina, we're building endurance here. Five. Four. Three. Two. And one. Gaze forward, step or hop to the front. Inhale. Exhale, hold. Inhale, find your chair, Utkatasana, hips make. Exhale, stand tall. We'll take one last sunbeam with a variation. Inhale, chair. Exhale, fold down. Inhale, heart lifts. Exhale, plant the hands, optional vinyasa for mean and down dog. From down dog, step the right leg forward. Let the left heel come down. Inhale, arms reach. And once you've found your way there, we'll make our way into humble warrior. Hands come behind the back, fingers interlace. Maybe you grab opposite elbows if that feels more comfortable. And then inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, wiggle the right foot out, begin to hinge forward. Try to draw the right knee to the outside of the right shoulder. Head drops, maybe you gaze at the back heel or at the front big toe. Two more breaths. With your next breath, reach back up. Optional vinyasa here. You can always meet us in down dog. Left leg steps. Right heel down, arms reach. Humble warrior on this side. With the opposite thumb or the opposite elbow on top. Peel the fists or arms away from the leg. Exhale, fold down. Again, head is heavy, three breaths. And with your next breath, begin to come back up. Arms reach. Frame out the foot, Chaturanga Dandasana. Five last breaths in our down dog before we find a little rest here. Five. Four. Three. Two. And one gaze forward. When you bend the knees, lift the heels, step. We're hop forward. Lengthen through the spine. Exhale, deep fold. Chair pose, sink the weight into the heels. Gaze high, proud chest. Exhale, stand tall, hands come to heart. Take a moment to wipe sweat drink water. Otherwise, I'll just meet with the top of your mat and we will take some deep forward folds to continue opening up the hips and legs. All right, as you're ready, we'll come back to the front of the mat and we're gonna make our way right into um, our yogi toe lock here. 
So bring your feet as wide as your hips or as wide as your shoulders. You can reach the arms high and then exhale, fold down. So take the fingers, wrap them around the big toes, and then allow the chest to come and rest on the thighs. So I'm gonna deep bend in my knees so that there's a thigh to belly connection. If you have really open hamstrings, maybe you can get your legs totally straight. If that's true, then maybe you bend a little into the elbows and tuck the head in between the knees. So either the legs are straight or the arms are straight, probably not both. Another two breaths. Squeezing the thighs into the legs. With the belly into the legs, rather. With your next breath, you can begin to use support. I like to keep my hands on my feet for just a second, kind of stretch out the back. One deep inhale. And then exhale, pull forward, coming to Padahasthasana, Gorilla Pose, even deeper hamstring stretch. So again, bending the knees is definitely all right. You can tuck the head, draw it between the knees. Maybe bring a little more weight into the balls of the feet, just so you can feel the stretch a little differently. But the heels are still planted, so don't lift the heels. One last breath here. All right, and as you're ready, we're going to bring the feet really wide, maybe as wide as the mat. The toes can come out. We'll come into Malasana or Yogi Squat. So if it's hard for you to drop your hips this low, you can always be up higher, right? You can always be here, your choice. But if you can get down this low, fantastic. We'll open the hips as much as we can. We'll take five breaths here. Maybe hands come to prayer. And the elbows press into the knees. All right, with your next round of breath, you can plant your hands. Just step right back to down dog if you'd like a vinyasa. Feel free to take it. I'll just wait for you here in down dog. So taking a couple breaths. One more breath here, maybe you side out. Lift the right leg high, and then flex the toes down towards the earth, crunch the knee in towards the nose, hold for three, two, and one, and gently step it through. It's okay if you have to wiggle it through to get where you want it. I'm definitely doing that here. And then as you're ready, press your left heel away from you. Left leg is really straight, and we'll slowly rise up into crescent lunge. So we'll be here for three reps, thinking about scissoring and the, the thighs. So imagine we're closing a pair of scissors and we're squeezing the thighs back together. And then bring the hands to heart center, ground down into the right heel. And we're going to move into a standing balance here. So we'll see how this goes. Drawing my left. All right, we did it. You can bring your left hand, wrap it around the left knee. You have standing hand to toe. And you'd like to extend the leg out long, feel free to do that. Otherwise, we'll be here for five, four, Three, two, and one. Open the leg out to the side. Try to keep the hips level. Five, four, three, two, and one. Bring the leg back together to the center. And we're going to cross it right over the leg, coming into standing figure four. If you put your foot down for a second, not a problem. Hands can come back to prayer. When we bring that left foot over our right knee, actively flexing through the left toes, sink the hips a little bit. Maybe you lift the hands for more of a challenge or fold forward. We'll stay here for five, four, three, 
two, and one. Inhale, lifting back up. Beautiful. Step that left foot just a tiny bit back. We're going to set up for pyramid pose. So the right toes point just straight forward. Left toes point a little bit off to the left. Hands can come to hips. Grab the elbows behind you or take reverse prayer. So reverse prayer is definitely if you have more open shoulders. If you want to play with it, feel free. And then from here, we'll press the palms together. Make sure our heart's nice and open. And fold, find a nice flat back, letting the head ease down, soft, neutral back. With your next breath, release your hands down to the earth. You can walk your fingertips a little bit farther forward, bend it into your right knee. And with the deep inhale, lift the left leg high. And we'll take a standing slip here. Let the head be nice and heavy. Flex the left toes down to the earth. Hold for five. Four. Three. Two. And one. Release that left foot down next to the right. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. We'll plant the hands, vinyasa, if you'd like it. Otherwise, I'll meet you in downward facing dog. And take two rounds of breath here. I'm going to check and make sure that we are muted. And then as you're ready, we'll take the sequence on the opposite side. So this time, our left leg sweeps high. Flex those toes down towards the earth. We'll begin to crunch that in. Slight angry cat through the back. Three, two, and one. And squeeze that knee and step it as far forward as you can get it. Beautiful. Beginning to make our way into our crescent lunge. Press the right heel away from your knees forward. As you're ready, slowly begin to come up into a full crescent lunge. Another two breaths here, scissoring the thighs, thinking about closing the legs. As you're ready, hands come back to prayer, and we'll come into that standing balance series. So a little bend in the left leg, and then come forward, coming either into standing hand to knee or standing hand to toe. Wrapping the fingers around the big toe. When you're there, hold for five, four, three, two, and one. Open that up. Hold for five, four, three, two, and one. Close it back up. Cross that leg over, coming into a standing figure four. Hands can be a prayer. We can reach some hyper challenge or fold forward, really bringing a stretch into our right hip. Take it through five, four, three, two, and one. Beautiful. Begin to come back up. Step the right foot back, coming into our pyramid pose. Left toes forward, right toes a little bit off to the right side. Same options with our arms. Try to pick the same one you did on the left side so we find balance. Press the elbows back, palms together. And then exhale, fold forward. Nice flat back, so don't go all the way down just yet. Gaze down at the left big toe, three breaths. Release your hands down to the earth. We'll begin to kind of crawl the fingers forward, coming into our standing slip. We're here for another three, two, and one. 
that right foot can come just next to the left arm or go back to our malasana, our yogi squat, just because we're doing a lot of hip stuff tonight. You never have too much malasana. If this is really easy for you and you want to make yogi squat harder, turn the toes in. Let the feet be parallel. If that's still super easy, see how close you can get the feet together and still come here. So try not to stick the bottom out too far and like crunch the head over. We want to try to have a long spine as much as we can. Two more breaths. And with our next breath, we'll begin to make our way back. Returning to a down dog. As you're there, we're going to inhale, sweep the right leg high, fan that hip open, we've been here before. Maybe you notice it feels a lot better, maybe it's even more open. You can take some knee circles, ankle circles, anything like that. And then step the foot in between the hands, coming up into our first warrior two of the night. Sink really deep into that right knee. Let the breath settle, make sure you're breathing. And with your next breath, we'll begin to straighten through the right leg, reach forward with the right hand, allow the right hand to reach down to the earth. If you need a block here, definitely use that option. Left hand can extend it overhead, or maybe you take a half bind, sweeping the left hand behind you, reaching for the right hip crease. So this continues to open up our shoulders, which will help us get into our peak pose tonight. It's called flying lizard. So we'll get there shortly. All right, with our next breath, we can begin to come back. We're going to go right into radiant triangle. Keep the legs straight. Left hand slides down the left leg. Skis up the right hand. Take three breaths. All right, come back up. And then we're going to come into extended side angle. Head into the right knee. Right forearm can come to the thigh. Or if you feel ready, right hand to the earth. Left arm reaches high. Great place for a block or to tend the fingers. Three deep breaths, bend into that knee. This is a deep, deep stretch. All right, so a couple options here as a little challenge. Some people like to play with a half bind, sweeping the left hand behind them. If that feels okay, you can still keep your left shoulder back, great. If you notice your left shoulder and your head drop down, please pause along your yoga journey. Otherwise, maybe you come for a full bind. The right hand sweeping underneath, you'll see my chest drops for a second, and then I can shimmy it kind of back up. So that's full bind. If that feels okay, you can stay here. You want to go further, stay tuned. If you're like, my shoulders aren't doing any of that, there's a core option, which is reach your hands out like this, overhead, for as long as you can hold them. Usually I get to about four pounds and I'm toast. All right, so another option here, bird of paradise. You know, some of you have really open hamstrings. So I'm just stepping my right foot in, holding that bind. This is gonna be ugly, but we're, we're being cool with the discomfort. Lift that right leg up. Maybe extend it high, hold for five, four, three, two, and one, right? We're gonna practice the stuff we hate. That's not my favorite pose, but we did it. All right, unwind, side angle for just a second. Awesome. Back, radiate. Cartwheel down, vinyasa if you like it. So maybe the vinyasa feel good to release the hips. Hips come high. We'll take a full round of breath here. As you're ready, left leg reaches. Nice open hip. Noticing if it feels any more open than it did at the start of practice. Left leg forward, warrior two. 
Carve the hands open, bend that left knee. One more breath. And then straighten the left leg, prepare for Trikonasana. Left arm slides on the left leg. Right hand reaches high. With your next breath, ground on through the feet, begin to come back up. We'll come into side angle again, deep in through that left leg. Forearm can come to the thigh. Left arm can come to the inside of the foot. Right arm reaching high. Again, same options along this leg. Right hand sweeping behind you for a half bind. Left arm sweeping underneath for a full bind. My shoulder usually cracks here. And then that core option, holding it looks like a big beach ball over the head for as long as you can. If you want to take the bird of paradise, that crazy arm balance, you pop your right foot in. See if I can do this. And then lift the left leg as high as you're able. For five, four, three, two, and one, release. I hope you're breathing through these tricky postures. Even if you made it halfway, that's fantastic. Side angle for a second. Return to a radiant warrior. Vinyasa. Take a nice open mouth breath here. Inhale. And side out. All right, coming back to warrior one. Right foot steps just behind the right wrist. And we'll inhale coming up. So sink in. I like to slide my right foot even farther forward here because I know that my Achilles and my left half are more open. So longer stance if you can. One more breath. And then as you're ready, straighten both legs. Oh dang, I tricked us. Now we have this long stance. We're doing intense stretch. So like pyramid pose, try to get the hips to square forward. You want to wiggle that back foot in, feel free. If you want to take reverse prayer, also a good option to open the heart. Inhale. And exhale, hinge to fold as far as you're able. Draw the right hip back. Try not to let the hips swing over to the right side. If your head swings over to the left, think about squaring the hips to the back of the mat. Two more breaths. Beginning to come back. All right, so I like to bring my hands to heart center. We're gonna make our way into warrior three. Lots of standing downs today. Bend into that right knee. Maybe come up onto the ball of the left foot. And take your version of warrior three. So the body is like an upside down or a standing T rather. Hold for five, four, three, two, and one. Release that leg down behind you. We're gonna set up for crescent. Be kind of back a moment to Adjust, feel free. Arms reach. Deep and into that right knee. So we've been in this crescent lunge before. Left hand comes down. Our regular gentle twist that we always take in our crescents. Right arm reaches high. You turn your body towards the knee. One last breath. And then bring both hands to the earth, walk your hands to the back of the mat. We're setting up for Skandasana, another deep hip stretch. So objective is to keep the left heel grounded and lift the right toes up. You can't get this far down, come up higher. It looks more like an ice skater lunge. But as low as you can take it is great. Hold for three, two, and one. We'll go back to the front of the mat. 
you gaze over at those left toes as they lift up. Three, two, and one. Back to the other side. All right, this is our last Skandasana on the left side. Whew. So I'm taking a bind. You don't have to take it. But I'm wrapping my left arm underneath my knee and my right arm behind me. If you didn't hear my shoulder crack, I apologize. It's a totally delightful noise. And then we'll come up to lizard at the front of the mat. So deep bend in the right knee, come onto the ball of the left foot. Right foot slides all the way over to the right side of the mat. All right, I like to floss my hips out here. Moving forward and back. And then shifting side to side, noticing where I feel any sticky spots. Option, if you want to drop the left knee down, feel free to do that. And you can go to your deepest variation of lizard. But this is our peak pose tonight, so I'm going to walk you through flying lizard. It's a shoulder bind and it's a hip stretch. So, I take my right hand and I sweep it underneath my right leg. So my left hand remains plunger for the moment. And then I try to reach my right hand back and place it on my right hip crease. If you can get there, you can stay down and shift a little more weight into your right foot. Then, if available, lift the left hand up, clasp the hands behind the right hip. Gaze forward, hold for five, four, three, two, and one, release. That was amazing. Vinyasa or medium down dog. All right, last side, and then we're pulling it down. Left leg lifts. Warrior one. So again, left leg comes as far forward as you can get it. We're really stretching out the Achilles. We're really stretching out that left calf. Two more breaths. As you're ready, legs straight in, 10 stretch. If you need to wiggle the right foot in, feel free to do that. You know your legs, so you want to keep them both straight. Hands can come to reverse prayer or any other arm variation. Inhale. With the exhale, hold down. One last breath. You should feel this in the back of the left leg. Begin to come back up. We're prepping for warrior three, our last standing balance here. Hands come to heart center. A little bend in that left leg. Come to the ball of the right foot. Pull it for five, four, three, two, and one. Step back to your crescent. Take a second to settle that in. We're on the ball of the right foot. The right heel is lifted if you can. And then gentle twist. Right, so easy now, left arm reaches high. Hopefully you feel this in the left hip, it feels nice. Skandasana to the rear of the mat. So walk your hands back. Right heel plants, left toe lifts. Come to where you can be with the right heel down. If your right heel is not down, lift those hips up. Find a good spot for your body. Walk the hands forward to the left. Left heel down. Again, if you want to take a bind, you can probably see the bind better on my body at this point. Last stand at the rear of the mat. So I'm wrapping my right arm underneath. I'm trying to gaze over my left shoulder. Three, two, and one. Walk the hands forward, coming into lizard on the ball of the right foot. Left foot slides all the way over to the left side of the mat. Again, we can floss out the hips. Okay. 
And if you're dropping the knee, go there, go to your deepest place. Otherwise, coming into our peak pose tonight. Keep that right hand down. I like to reach my left hand and sweep my left hand under my left leg, kind of like I'm wearing it as a backpack. So your leg is like the backpack in this analogy. The left hand reaches for left hip crease. I like to move my left foot in just a little so I can kind of have my thighs more uh, engaged. Shift the weight into the left leg, right hand sleeves back, hold for five, four, three, two, and one, release, beautiful. All right, down dog. Last vinyasa here. We'll come right into our pigeon pose, last deep hip stretch for the night. Lift the right leg high. Bring the right knee behind the right wrist. You want the knee to the outside of your right hip. Left leg drops down, the toes on top. And then come to a place where you can be comfortable. We'll be here for about 10 breaths. If a seated figure four feels better in your practice, definitely take that. Beginning to make your way back to your hands. We can tuck our left toes under, lift our right leg high. Maybe you just fan that hip open again. Maybe you take some hip circles. If you'd like to take a flip dog, feel free to take it. It's just like a little back bend here. We'll all meet back in our down dog shape and take the hot pigeon on the opposite side. Left leg reaches. Draw the left knee behind the left wrist. Try to get the knee to the outside of the hip, untuck the toes, inchworm that leg back, feeling the stretch. And then as you're ready, beginning to make your way down. So maybe this is a good place to come back to your intention, the idea that the yoga begins when you want to come out of the pose. So maybe right now it's hard not to fidget, it's hard not to look at your watch or your phone. It's just reminding you to stay with the yoga, stay with the breath. Maybe close the eyes another two breaths. Plant your hands and we'll begin to flush out that hip. You can just take hip circles or anything you took on the opposite side. If you're thinking about taking flip dog, feel free to try it. So both heels plant, right hand reaches down, the left hand reaches back behind me. I look at my left arm. And then returning to our down dog. And then walking my feet in, finding a comfortable seat. All right, so we'll take a couple of back bends here, a couple of twists, but we're gonna start with just a forward fold. So you can have the feet about shoulders with distance apart, begin to walk the arms forward. Maybe you use your strap or your towel here to grab onto the legs and the feet and pull yourself further in. Take one more round of breath and then begin to make your way back up. We'll set up for a reverse table. If you'd like to take reverse plank, feel free. So I can demo that. I always like to walk my feet out a little further, draw my toes and my heels together, and my full foot plants down on the earth. 
You can take two lion's rock here. Hips can come back down to the earth and we'll set up for John Ushir shots in our right leg long. Left knee bends in like a seated tree. Inhale, reach. Exhale, hold over your right leg. Again, maybe use the strap or the towel to bring yourself closer. And slowly beginning to come back up. We'll set up for half Lord of Fishes. So we haven't done a whole lot of twisting tonight, and this is one of my favorite twisted shapes. So you can bring your left knee to point up to the ceiling and then cross it over the body. You want both sit bones down on the earth, so make sure you're not lifting up that left butt cheek. And then sweep the right arm around like you're hugging the left knee in. Walk your left hand behind you. Flex the right toes, these over the left shoulder. If you know you can come deeper, you can take a field goal arm and hook that to the inside of the leg and twist yourself even more deeply in. Relax the toes, keep breathing. Allow the body to come over to the right side. And then we'll switch out our legs. So oh, I have a sleepy cat. All right, oh, sorry buddy. Allow the body to walk over onto the left leg. Again, maybe the strap, maybe this towel feels good here. With your next exhale, release the leg. We'll come into half Lord of Fishes. So the right knee points up towards the sky. When we pick it up, make sure both sit bones are planted. And then from here, left arm wraps around, hugging that left knee in, right knee in, right hand sweeps behind you. Gaze over the right shoulder, flex the left toes. Again, same choice to take field goal arm and twist deeper. Remember to breathe. And then with your next breath, let the body fall over to the left side. We'll take one more forward fold, Pashimottanasana. You can reach your arms high, exhale, fold forward, come into your deepest place. Continuing to find those deep Ujjayi breaths. As you're ready, beginning to make your way back up when we just move my dear cat out of the way. And we're going to make our way into a couple of back bends. Hi, buddy. All right, so taking our back bends here, you can come to let the back rest on the earth. Oh my goodness, this cat is relentless. <laughs> and then reach down in the direction of your heels. Maybe we can take three or four rounds of bridge pose here. If you know you can come higher to feel, feel free to do so. So with your inhale, lift your hips high. We'll hold for five, four, three, two, and one. Begin to come back down. Maybe you want to come further, interlacing the fingers behind your back, kind of like we did in our humble warrior shape. Press down through your hands, press down through your feet, lift the hips up, hold for five, four, three, two, 
and one. If you know you're going deeper to wheel, feel free to prep for that. Bringing the hands back, pointing them towards the shoulders, finding those little grasshopper arms. I like to come to the crown of my head first and then press up. Otherwise, if you're sticking with bridge, maybe you play with lifting the right leg and then the left. So I'll try to demo that. Ground down through both hands, both heels. Lift the hips up and bend the right knee in and lift the right leg high for five, four, three, two, and we're going to release the right leg down to the earth. We'll take that on the opposite side. If you're going with the wheel, take your time to get there. Cross down. Inhale, hips up. Left knee bends in. Left leg extends towards the sky. Five, four, three, two, and one. We'll all meet in Supta Baddha Kanasana. The soles of the feet press together and the knees open wide. Your legs kind of form this nice diamond shape. One of them can come to the belly and one can come to the heart. We'll begin to soften our breath here. Inhaling for the count of three, two, and one. And exhaling for the count of three, two, and one. Inhaling for the count of four, three, two, and one. Exhale for the count of four, three, two, and one. Option to take a cooling inversion here. So if you have a comfortable headstand in your practice, this would be a great time to take it. Otherwise, you can take legs up a wall or supported shoulder stand. So legs up a wall is just like what it sounds like. I like to bring my right hip right up alongside the wall and then just swing my legs up. If you are down on the earth and you can reach for a block or a very full tissue box, you can elevate the hips and then maybe reach the legs up towards the sky. Trying to get the Legs in a straight line, toes right over the knees, knees right over the hips. We'll take about 10 breaths here. So if you're in any inversion from headstand to legs up a wall to support and shoulder stand, it is a great way to provide some rest to the legs. So if you do a lot of running or biking or just have a job that requires you to be standing a lot, this is really nice for the end of the day. A lot of people practice this prior to going to bed just to kind of get their legs feeling calm. Two more breaths. And then slowly, gently beginning to make your way back down. We'll set up for some supine twists here. So sticking with that variation of opening the hips, since we worked the hips a lot tonight, take your right leg, cross your right leg over your left, flex into the right toes. And then walk the left foot over to the left side, and then let the legs fall over to the right. So you should feel this in the front of the left hip. So into the hip flexor, maybe a little bit into that left quad. Take three deep breaths. And then as you're ready, begin to come back up. We'll switch out our legs. So the right heel plants on the earth, left leg lifts up. You cross that over, flex through the left toes. Wiggle the right foot out off the mat and then let the right knee drop down. And you should feel the stretch into the right hip. You can always gaze over to the left side, extend the arms out, take three breaths. And 
as you're ready, beginning to come back up. With your next five rounds of breath, taking any postures or poses that feel good in your body. So maybe you know that you like a Shavasana early and you're ready for that. Or maybe your body would feel better if you took a seated meditation, returning to your intention. Maybe you know that your body needs a happy baby. Just one last hamstring stretch. So your choice, the next five breaths are yours. And then as you're ready, beginning to make your way out. We'll begin to make our way into our Shavasana shape. So you can draw the head and knees closer together, squeezing the knees deep into the chest, giving your body one last hug, letting head and shoulders hover over the mat. Inhale deeply. And then exhale, release the body out long on the mat. So the toes can fall out to the sides, maybe one hand to the belly, one to the heart. Or maybe the palms come down by the side body. You can shake the head yes and no. And if any wandering thoughts just come into the head, letting them slip away from you. Just acknowledging them, but letting them pass on by, just like leaves making their way downstream. We'll spend the next few moments here together in silence for rest and for peace. slowly beginning to make your way back. Bringing little movements into the fingers, the toes, you can wiggle out the ankles and the wrists, finding small circles there. Reach your arms overhead and roll over to your favorite side. You'll be using the biceps as a pillow. You're drawing the knees in close to the chest. Taking a moment here to be grateful that you have a body that's capable of yoga asana practice, being grateful that you are safe, you are healthy. And slowly with as little energy as possible, just make your way to a comfortable seat. Finding any shape that feels good in your body. You can allow the hands to come and rest on the thighs. Maybe the palms face up. Returning to your intention if you set one, 
or maybe just beginning to return to that idea of sitting with your discomfort knowing that the yoga begins when you want to leave the pose. Thinking how that might apply to your own life, how might it be relevant in the days to come? And with our next breath, we'll close out our practice with the sound of OM, oh, hands come together at heart center, inhale, exhale, side out. Inhale for OM. Oh. With your next breath, your heart, your thumbs can come together at the place between your eyebrows, the third eye center. The light and the teacher inside me honors the light and the teacher inside each and every one of you. Thank you for sharing your breath, your energy, and your practice with me and with each other. Namaste. All right. I will unmute you guys if you want to chat. Hello, everyone doing okay? Everyone was good? Cool. Uh, I don't know if you could tell, but my cat decided to lay on me as soon as we got down on the floor. So I was doing all my bridges with a cat on me. So I was like, hope this works. Uh, try my best. Uh, cool. Well, if you guys have any- You were gonna go all the way up. What's up? I was hoping the cat was gonna jump off you when you were at the top. Gosh, well, it's funny. I was expecting something cool. Like uh, a week or so ago, and I went all the way up, and she did jump off. And we we have a funny picture of that, um, or I guess it's like a boomerang. But yeah, she's pretty. If you're doing something, she wants to be right in the mix. So she's a good That's man. Yeah, cool. Well, if you guys need anything, let me know. Have an awesome week. Enjoy the beautiful weather. I think it's supposed to be nice for the next two or three days. Um, yeah. Cool. Thank you. I will see you guys. Thanks, Kristen. Have a lovely weekend. Thanks, Kristen. You too. Yeah, bye, guys.